Hello, welcome back to the Board Games 4K YouTube channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, generally talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a dexterity game that kind of accurately represents the game of tennis. We're going to be talking about Athen Tennis. And yes, it comes in a sleeping bag holder. But in this game, you'll be using an elastic style contraption to ping the ball across the net and moving your monkey a certain number of spaces to win points that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like what we don't like and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Athen Tennis is still worth playing several years after it was first released so remember if you're new here then please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down below we'll see you after this board games so, Athen Tennis, how do you play this game? So what you're going to do, you're going to grab yourself a racket, which is a basically a piece of wood with an elastic band on, and you'll be using it to ping the ball across the net to the other player so they can return the ball. Right? So you'll take one of the rackets, you'll take yourself a monkey, and then you'll elect a player to serve, and then you'll place the monkey on the baseline, and you'll take the little plastic tennis ball, and then you'll put the racket behind the ball, and you'll pull back the little lever to a certain power point, They're all etched on the racket itself and then you'll let go and this will hit the ball and ping it across to the other side and you've got to remember that the pinpoint the tip of the monkey base is the hex that your monkey is currently standing in right so when you serve you have to get the ball into the diagonally opposite square it's not like in tennis where you've got the square closest to the net it's the one behind that right that's one of the deviations from the traditional tennis rules and if you do then you can move your monkey up to five spaces after you have hit the ball and then the player returning the ball will get the option moving their monkey up to six spaces and then returning the ball and you've also got to remember that there's only two hit positions you've got the forehand and the backhand the left and the right and that's the only place where the monkey can move with the ball being in between those two points right so if your monkey cannot reach the ball then you can borrow points from the five points that you're going to get after you hit the ball and that would mean say for instance if you borrow two points from the five points that you're going to get then you'll be able to take eight movement points but you'll only be able to take three after you've hit the ball so you'll return the ball across the net and then you'll be able to move six points there is an additional rule about moving backwards they cost more points it costs an extra one point or two points in total to move diagonally backwards but if you're moving just straight backwards then it's going to cost you three points per hex right so you've got to be very wary about repositioning your monkey for the return shot there's also some sort of fiddly rules to do with where you can place your racket to do with when you're borrowing points from the points that you get after you've hit the ball right but basically what you'll be doing you'll be hitting the ball backwards and forwards getting points in a traditional tennis sense you know like 15 30 juice and aces and all that sort of thing and after three sets the player who has won the most sets will be the winner of Athen tennis so what do we like about Athen tennis so the first thing that we really do like about it is the fact that there's not that many tennis games out there, truth be told, is it? I mean, I can think of one more. I think it's set and match, dexterity game from France here. Yeah. That's the only other tennis game we can think of. Obviously, you've got games like the Pass Trap that sort of maybe utilise the same sort of thing. But this is a quite a faithful representation of the game. I mean, I think why they chose monkeys, I don't know. I think the figurines are actually like a comic book character from Germany. And I think that Affin is monkey in German, I do believe, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. I might be wrong on that, I don't know. Yeah, the fact that this is probably one of the only tennis decks there he goes that I can think of makes it quite unique. So the second thing that we really like about Affin Tennis is it's really great fun using that crazy elasticated contraption. You know, you can try and position your monkey on either side of the ball, whether or not you want to use your forehand or your backhand. And also the fact that the power levels are actually scribbled onto the lever thing is actually quite good. So you can think, well, you know exactly how much power you're going to be putting in. So 
got your own sort of gear system that's baked in. I mean, they are a little bit feeble with the elastic bands. They're those sort of elastic bands that seem to tend to wither over time. But even so, when I played this with my kids the other day, they were clamoring to get hold of that contraption. They, really, they were really intrigued by it and they did find it really, really good fun. So the third thing that follows on from the last thing that we were talking about is the fact that you've actually got a net not a physical net in this game, but you've got a simulated net. If you turn the felt mat over, then what they've done, they've, they've stitched in a raised portion in the center of the felt mat where the two mats join. So you've got like a hump to get over in the center of the board. That's, that's actually fantastic. I didn't have to do that. They could have just had a, you know, painted the, the net on there. They've gone to the trouble of actually stitching a net in and it works really, really well. You've got to be very, very careful that you give it just enough power to get over the net, but not enough so that it flies off the board. So yeah, we really do like the fact that they have implemented quite a novel approach to simulating the net in tennis. So the final thing that we really like about Athen Tennis is the charming monkey figurines really do lift this game up. And if you think about it, if those monkeys weren't there, if this wasn't called monkey tennis, right, then you'd be thinking, well, maybe it's just a bland, sterile, representation of tennis but no those little monkey figures that you've got in there they really do lift the theme up and give it that sort of comic edge as well so it's not a completely dull serious game which it could have been had those monkeys not been in there you know what i mean so what don't we like about Athen tennis so the first thing that we don't like about monkey tennis is the felt mat sometimes it feels like a design flaw and the rules do tell you to flatten out the bumps in the mat, but that is very difficult. There's still bumps on the felt mat. And when we play it on our games table, we've got one of them games tables with the, the slats that you have to take off to get to the gaming surface underneath. And if we play it on top of that, then you're gonna have these ridges and any kind of bumps in your table, this game's not gonna work because it's gonna be an uneven journey for the ball to travel from one side of the table to the other. So that's a real, real disappointment. The fact that that felt mat, when it's rolled up in this sleeping bag, yeah, it's gonna get creases and it's gonna get bumps. So stupid, stupid monkey. So the second thing that we don't like about monkey tennis, and this is probably the thing that bugs us the most about this, is it's very bloody difficult to get your monkey to go where it wants because you haven't got that many points. The court itself is far too big for the measly amount of points you're gonna get. You're gonna get 11 points maximum, right? And if your opponent manages to get the ball into the corner, you've only moved your monkey those five spaces, remember? You have only got another six spaces that you can use to get there. And obviously you can borrow some more, but if you're moving backwards, if they get the ball behind you, you are completely and utterly stuffed. So there's no way out of it. And that means that you're gonna have a distinct lack of rallies in this game. And that's something is cruelly missing. That's something that we really, really want in this game is, is the back and forth rally aspect, you know, trying to outfox your opponent. So really, I don't know if you can house all something to do with more movement points, I don't know. But the fact that it's very difficult to position your monkey where you want it to be is a pain in the backside. So the third thing that we don't like about monkey tennis is the rules are really, really confusing. I mean, they're obviously translated from German, yeah? They come on a photocopied bit of paper, but when we first got this a few years ago, it cemented in my mind how confusing the rules are because it doesn't really make it clear that you've got five points in the first portion of the game and then you've got six after you've hit the ball. So it's all worded really weird and it doesn't really make a lot of sense. And it was trying to explain that to kids is a pain in the bum. So I don't know. I could have simplified the rules. I could have broken it down into bullet points or something like that, but the rules, aren't particularly clear in this game, especially when you're talking about the additions that they've got. You've got like a volley block in this year where you can obviously volley the ball where you've got this sort of big block of wood. And there's also a lob ramp that you can add in if you want, but oh my God, we tried adding that and it's just insanely difficult to do it. So, you know, that sort of stays in the bag. But yeah, the rules, you need a packet of Nurofen when you're gonna buy this game. So the final thing that we don't like about Athen Tennis is the fact that it's so bloody hard to get hold of. I think it is actually for sale at this current moment in time. And there is a doubles version, which probably would solve the problem of moving your monkey around, right? But that is, isn't is in print anymore, it's not being made. So the fact that this game is so difficult to get hold of is a real pain in the neck. That really bugs us when these sort of games, these dexterity games that we love so dearly, sort of come in and out of print, it means that a lot of people can't get hold of them. And that's a real, real shame. But to summarize, is Athen Tennis still worth playing today and in the future? So we are gonna say yes, it's 
a pleasurable tennis experience. It quite accurately represents the sport of tennis. There's not that many tennis games out there, so if you are looking for a tennis game, you've got you've got a very limited number of choices to go for. If there was a fix for the frustration in getting your monkey where it needs to be, then this would be, without doubt, a five-star dexterity game. But the fact is, it's so frustrating, it's so difficult to get your monkey where it's gonna be, that we are gonna have to give this three out of five. We really do enjoy this game when it goes right, but when it doesn't go right, it can be very depressing and very frustrating. We're gonna say that this is a flawed masterpiece. It, it's, a, it's a case of, it, it's almost there. It's tantalizingly close to being a classic and a game that everybody should get hold of, but it just doesn't quite reach that level so that we can recommend it. But Athen Tennis is still a very, very fun dexterity game if you can find it. So there you go, that's Athen Tennis. Remember, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. We'll see you next time.